Hello there. Welcome to Why in the Morning. If it's Tuesday, you know, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 Channel. So you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira. Is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular session, I dive into an interview that looks at the bookstore business oh yeah so you and i know that bookshops are places of entertainment at least uh, while i was still in uh, high school and i'm so sure my team which one do you call the millennials the millennials millennials have another defense but and then i have people who will be like mm, your team learn anyway so this particular conversation is all about the bookstore business and uh, we are looking at different aspects of it that is in into hard copy kind of uh, books or into ebooks so in studio i'm joined by aileen kemunto who is an accountant by profession and she is the owner of book Launch. All right. So, hi, Lynn. Hi, Michelle. Happy Tuesday. How are you doing? I'm doing well. All right. So, Aileen, mm. yours is an interesting story. So, you started uh, this business after you quitted your job, right? Okay. I started before I quit the job. Okay. So, tell it, us the story now. So, uh, you know, when COVID started yes. last year, let's say around February there. Mm -hmm. And then around March, um, companies had, you know, th they had started to be, you know, lots of noise about the COVID thing. People are so scared. And then uh, some organizations started sending people home, you know, the social distancing mm -hmm. thing. Like uh, if you were four in the office, maybe now you have two, be two. So I was part of the two that had to be sent for uh, unpaid leave kind of because we were just getting paid just half the salary and it's the hotel industry and uh, you know the hotel industry was hit so bad that's true so uh around april actually i started selling rice because i needed a backup plan then by the end of uh, april i feel like rice is not even the rice business is not doing is not doing it's as not picking up yeah as it's much. not picking up because the profit margin when it comes to rice mm -hmm. it is so small so like you have to sell tons of rice to make good money so around may i start figuring out about uh, passion and business because sometimes you remember motivation motivational speakers saying when you want to do business uh the business that is likely to work uh -huh. is the business where your passion is Yes, so, and you, you wouldn't have to work a day, yes, basically. Yes, yes. Which is so true. I start looking for pa my passion. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, sleeping cannot give you money. <laughs> you can have mm -mm. sleeping, but it cannot give you money. Mm -hmm. So eventually, um, towards the middle of May, I feel like, okay, I, I read books. People ask where I buy my books. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why don't I just try selling books? So I do a post on my Facebook wall and uh, tell people that one of these fine days I'm going to just decide and sell books from my bookshelf. I took mm -hmm. a picture of a bookshelf. And then the reactions were like outrageous. You know, others were telling me, oh, you don't have to sell your books. Others were like, no, I want that Hitler one. I want the, that uh, Gabriel Union. We are going to need more wine. You know, orders are coming, mm -hmm. and I've not even said mm -hmm. I'm selling the books. Okay. So I say, so here is the thing. So people inbox me. People want books. That first day, I actually sold 16, 16 books from my bookshelf. People really? sent money. Yes. And uh, it was during a lockdown, during that period. So people were not moving around. We could call this a blessing in disguise. Yes, yes. So I sold 16 books the first day. I made around, uh, around 10,000. And uh, so the next day I started working on sending the books to Nairobi. Most of the customers that bought the books are actually my friends, my social media friends, because that is when I first made the first business. Uh, so I start dispatching books. So I'm selling books from my bookshelf. So I'm getting orders from books lying on my bookshelf. Mm -hmm. So I say, um, uh, let, me, let me talk to the guy that sells me books. Mm -hmm. I tell him I want to start selling books. 
would you mind sharing how I can get the supply? And then um, uh, she, she's a lady. She used to be my friend. She used to sell me books. Okay. Then she tells me, it's okay. I'll give you two, three contacts, and then you can work, you can work it out. So um, uh, first I get a contact of a certain supplier. Uh, the supplier is in Nairobi. I'm in Nembu. I cannot move. But I want to start the business. So I tell this supplier, mm -hmm. um, I want to start selling books. So what is going to happen? I'm going to give you the orders. And then you're going to find someone who can be my delivery person mm -hmm. uh, to be dispatching the books for me. For me, it's about, you know, uh, getting to give you the details. So, you know, this, uh, I, I want the three books sent to Mombasa, two books sent to Kisumu, others delivered within the CBD. And uh, the supplier was, uh, first of all, was, was skeptical, was like, how is this going to work? We don't work that way. <laughs> it's either you come over, do your business, or ask someone to do it for you because we don't do that. Uh, I try to negotiate, negotiate. Then the next day, I give him orders of around 25 books. Uh, we start there. So somehow, he feels this is real business mm -hmm. now. We can start the business. There's the demand. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's the demand. So I realize people are in the house. They want to read. Uh, so my first customers were actually my Facebook friends. Mm -hmm. So I decided I need to open a page. Mm -hmm. So I created a Facebook page and then named it Book, Book Lounge. I didn't even have the business name. So Book Lounge came from a, uh, the name of a book club mm -hmm. that I used to run from six years ago. We used to read books, you know, share reviews, something like that. Mm -hmm. I said, if I came up with this name for the book club, mm -hmm. I can use it for, for the book business. Mm -hmm. So I create a page and then I start um, doing paid for ads. They are paid for ads on Facebook. So the page starts growing and uh, it's more it, visible. Yeah, yeah. It, get, it, it starts to be more visible. And you know, once you like, you invite your friends to like uh, your page, uh, it, it gets to be visible still from their other friends. So we start slowly from there. Um, I asked my other friend who was in Siaya to help me run the page so that we can, at the end of it all, we can see how we can share, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. proceeds. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, like that is how basically book launch started somehow, like a joke. It's totally interesting because yeah. it, it just feels like, uh, as, it's, as we said earlier on, it's all mm -hmm. about passion. Mm -hmm. And from what I'm hearing, it's like you're really passionate about reading yes because uh, six years ago you had a whole community of readers mm -hmm. book launch came from that so what is your niche in the market Consider you have so many bookstores mm -hmm. so what is your niche in the market what makes you stand out so what makes me stand out first of all is that uh, uh, okay I have a huge social media following and even before I started selling the books, people knew Kemunto as a bibliophile. You mentioned Kemunto, that one reads. Bookworm. Yeah, that's a bookworm. <laughs> so, and then now referrals. Mm -hmm. So once they saw Kemunto is a, a started selling books, mm -hmm. any other time someone is asking for a certain book somewhere, doesn't have to be my friend, I get a mention. You see? Mm -hmm. And then now I had to... I had to try and uh, do some research. What do Kenyans love reading? You see? So that I can stock what, what moves, the books that move. So Kenyan readers, basically, they love fiction and uh, motivational books. So that is what I started on. Um, but still, going, going forward, I still encouraged people, like, oh, you know, sometimes you don't have to read Patterson that you read when you were in high school or Daniel Steele. You can advance and start reading about people's stories, read about Obama, read about Michelle, read about Napoleon, you know, mm -hmm. so that you get to know about history, basically history, because, you know, fiction, sometimes it's some something in a different world. It's not really... Yeah. Real we'll life. be encouraging you to live in a fairy tale in your in a bubble. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 
All right, so when it comes to running a successful bookshop, what does it take? First of all, it takes patience, it takes commitment and discipline. Because uh, because without without the commitment, like uh, you 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 have to take mostly our customers are actually online, despite the fact that we have a physical store. We have very few customers that walk into our bookstore. So you always have to follow on orders. The orders that are left uh, in, uh, in the Instagram, our Instagram account, our Facebook account. And at the moment, we are only two people running those two accounts. And then, of course, the business line. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. So you always have to keep track of uh, orders and ensure that they are delivered on time. Because the moment a customer makes an order, because we've always told our customers that we do same day deliveries. So if a customer places an order today and uh, like uh, you don't track it down and it's forgotten, because I have someone at the shop that works on the orders and the deliveries. Mm -hmm. If it is forgotten, you know, that is also creating another business mess. The customer will be like, you don't, offer what you promise yeah. especially on timelines mm -hmm. yeah speaking about offering what you promise what should we expect if we decide to walk uh, to your book launch uh, a walk-in mm -hmm. what should we expect when you get in the book launch the bookstore so once you get into the book bookstore uh, the site of uh, so many books you know if you're someone who loves book books yani there'll be that orgasmic feeling, you know, oh, wow, all these books, you mean? And then the way we've, you know, arranged them, uh, because, you know, books are in different genres. We have uh, the fiction books, mm -hmm. autobiography, motivation. So if someone is going to tell, ask me uh, about where motivational books are, I'll just tell them, there, you're spelled for choice, you know? And then, of course, the after-sale service. We, all, we don't just sell a book. We'll sell a book. We'll give you a, a bookmark to use for the book because we don't want your book to have dog ears. So every other time you want to buy a book, even if you see it at the street, you'll be like, let me just come buy it because of the beautiful bookmark. All right. Then we have readers who are more of looking at, uh, if they want to, you know, read a book, they'll mm. prefer doing it uh, online, like e-books, e e that is. Mm. So the, does the book launch offer that? No, we don't, ha we don't offer electronic, mm -hmm. electronic books. Uh, at the moment, we are solely, like, uh, insisting on the hard copy material so that the culture of hard copy books does not die. Mm -hmm. Because personally, as a reader, I just love having my book in the physical nature so that I can turn the pages, I can feel the pages and even smell them, mm -hmm. you know, and even maybe highlight. And then, uh, uh, not only that, I just want to see my book mm -hmm. beautifully displayed in my bookshelf, you know, mm -hmm. because I have like four bookshelves in the house. Mm -hmm. So seeing my books lying on the bookshelf that is like a lady seeing maybe shoes oh yes and handbags shoes. accessories yeah so for me books are an accessory mm -hmm. for me like okay. just the beauty of seeing them so with an electronic book it's inside the phone so like okay to me there is no beauty of it but there are those that see the beauty okay. of it. do you feel like there will be a time where technology just wipes away our bookstores I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe, maybe to some extent, mm -hmm. but not entirely. Not entirely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, for someone who is, you know, here with us, having this conversation, listening to this conversation that you're having, and they're looking forward to start like a similar sort of kind of business of selling books, mm -hmm. uh, what would be your advice when it comes to starting off? Okay, uh, first the, the advice is uh, when you're starting, uh, uh, sometimes people like see it and uh, they, they, they are list of, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, what can I say? Like, um, they are list of wanting to start, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It's so long. Like, first of all, I must have capital. Uh -huh. I and must have the, customers. There's how much of it, by the there's way. There's how much of it. And then there's expectations. My mm -hmm. friends are going to buy from me. You know, mm -hmm. like, don't even have, you don't even have to have those in your list. Like, just start off. Like, myself, I even didn't start with any capital. I tell people that and mm -hmm. they're like, no, you're not serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just start and then um, look for people to hold your hand so that you can get this, the source. Because when you get from the source, not the middleman, you know, at least your revenue. Right. margin gets to be a little bit high. All right. And what makes uh, a person be a, a good bookseller when it comes to this particular business? I think what makes a person to be a good bookseller, first of all, you have to know your product. You know, like uh, I can say I am a good bookseller because I know the product that I'm dealing with. Like today, if someone walked into my shop and uh, they asked me about a particular book. I cannot lack an answer. You know, it's like you're selling cars and then uh, this is a Subaru. Someone comes mm -hmm. and is asking about the Subaru and you're so clueless but, about yeah. the Subaru. Okay. You know, yeah. because how I have organized my books, I know, okay, these are motivational books. Okay, from the title, if someone asked me, what is this about the book? You can at least try mm -hmm. to tell them what right. the book is about totally understandable <laughs> <laughs> so uh we are okay from uh, from your story when you started off zero capital by the way just uh, mm -hmm. selling what you uh your books that you used to read mm -hmm. um so there's this another i want to look at another perspective for someone who's watching this conversation and they're wondering why should i buy a book when we have apps that they offer free books Oops. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I have I have actually customers uh -huh. that uh, call me, uh -huh. and for example, they um, they tell me I've seen I've seen a book on your page, mm -hmm. but I want an ebook. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. do you have an ebook? Mm -hmm. Can you sell an ebook to me? So you you try to get into a conversation like, uh, why don't you buy the hard copy? Mm -hmm. It's actually like most of our pre-owned books, by the way, they go at the price of an e-book. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, most e-books are sold at a price of 100 shillings. Mm -hmm. Most of our pre-owned books actually go at that price. So you try to tell someone that they can get that oh, pre-owned book. the same thing, right? Yeah, it's the same thing. Same price also. Yeah, but mm -hmm. now someone tells you, when, when it is an e-book, I'm working with it. <laughs> flexibility. You know, <laughs> flexibility. And then uh, it's not heavy, like the portability mm -hmm. you get. Because for a book, you have to, maybe it's uh, so many pages, you have to carry it in a bag. You know, mm -hmm. all those dynamics. Yeah. All right. So uh, um, from a point of you being a lover of books and now into this business, what are a couple of mistakes that people actually do when buying a book? Oh, when buying a book, yes. the mistakes that people make. Yes. Book lovers. Yes. Oh, first of all, when someone says they're a book lover, mm -hmm. actually just cancel book lover and say, just a book collector, like a bibliomaniac. <laughs> Most of them, like they are so <laughs> addictive. Like uh -huh. I have customers, they just came, maybe someone just walked in last week to mm -hmm. buy 10 books. Mm -hmm. Next week, they, they have still, they have still, they'll still see some other 10 good books. So they'll still come to buy. So, you know, this already is a, a mistake because you're hoarding mm -hmm. so many books that you're actually not going to read even if you are given maybe a lifetime, you see. So, so you, you end up missing on reading even good books that you already have on because your you're bookshelf. you're rushing, right? Yeah, you're yeah. rushing. I'm so enthusiastic, I want that. Yeah, I want, I want, I want that. that, I want that. Or there's a, a good review mm -hmm. on uh, some book group, some book page about a certain book. Oh, I have to get this one. You've not even read whatever TBR list that is piling mm -hmm. you know so so most most people even uh, most readers even ask me like um 
like what can I do to just finish reading the books that mm -hmm. I've already bought mm -hmm. before I buy another one? Then I realize I'm still the same person they are talking about and asking for advice from. Mm -hmm. Because I, uh, before I even started selling books, I used to collect books, like so many books. Like I have so many unread books too. Oh, okay, so you're also a collector. <laughs> I'm also a collector, but it's a good thing. You know, it's like you're, mm -hmm. you're just collecting mm -hmm. rare gems and then, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, when you're collecting books, even if you don't read them, eventually maybe there's someone in your generation who is going to Talk pick to it up and, and read. Very sure. Yeah. A couple of challenges that you're facing into this business. Uh, yeah, there are quite a number of challenges. First of all, uh, we are running the business online. Okay. And most orders come from, uh, of course, the online platform. So trust, first of all, is the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. So we have customers that uh, will ask you to send books to Mombasa, maybe worth 8,000, and then the, they'll pay when the books arrive. So you tell them, no, we don't run the business. Uh, from that perspective, so for deliveries outside Nairobi, a customer has to has to pay first before we dispatch the books. And then they're like, how do I know that your business is legit mm. or you're, you're just trying to con people? So trust, that's the first thing. Then um, the second thing is about, um, you know, we, even when we send the parcels, sometimes they get lost with uh, the courier service providers. So when a, a customer's parcel gets lost, mm -hmm. it's another thing, you know? You're the one who still has to fo follow it up. Maybe this is a parcel that, uh, that was containing pre-owned books that you, don't, you cannot replace from the shop. So sometimes when a parcel gets, gets lost, the customer does not understand how it got lost. The customer feels like you actually did send the, mm -hmm. the parcel. The question is your credibility. Yeah, so mm -hmm. credibility still, trust, credibility, and that. Also sometimes um, meeting timelines. So someone is, um, someone is, can be within Nairobi, can be outside Nairobi, they have met their order at 8 a.m. and they want their books, maybe in the next two hours, you know. Sometimes you can really not deliver within that time. But nevertheless, we, we still uh, talk to our customers and uh, uh, tell them what can work and what cannot work. Because you cannot promise a customer in Mombasa that yes, we are sending your books in the morning at eight and you're going to get them at four in the evening. It cannot work. So you just tell them you have to be patient and when your parcel arrives, you'll get a confirmation. Okay. Yep. All right. In this particular space, there's a whole community of people who love to read. Are there particular events whereby you guys do book reviews? Yes, we are actually running a book club mm -hmm. and we do a book every other month. Because now, you know, with a book club, it means that uh, for someone who joins the book club and maybe they have not been reading as much as they were doing before, it's going to keep them in toes because they have to read a book every other month. And uh, in a year, it means someone is going to read 12 books. So, and then uh, with uh, the book club, we don't read uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, just a w one line of books, maybe fiction, no, we keep changing. So that uh, sometimes you find that this is a reader, they have never read fiction. So that, that particular month you're doing fiction, there's a way it can pull the reader to start reading at least fiction. The other month you're doing a self-help. So as you keep rotating, so you realize that every member of the book club has read from diversity. So like, okay, maybe my, my, my area of reading was so much inclined to fiction, but at least with this uh, book club I've read history, I've read uh, uh, self-help books, I've read so many books. Mm. Yeah, so your mind, your mind grows. And sometimes when you're having a discussion with other people, so the way I would have looked at that book, if I was to review it by myself, it is so different. So you get to have, diff to get different ideas from different people and different perspectives. 
All right, all right, yeah. all right. So, a couple of financial lessons that you've learned along the way. Sorry? A couple of financial lessons that you've learned along the way. So, um, so many financial lessons, but uh, one is about saving. Mm -hmm. When you're running a business, you know, especially for someone who has been on salary in their past, you know, mm -hmm. for salary, if, for example, it is 100,000, you're waiting for it at the end of the month, you're always budgeting, you know? Yeah, you're comfortable. It's, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. you're comfortable. I know rent is uh, 10,000, uh, you know, this. So you're just budgeting one day, like, actually it's on a constant most of the times. But not for a business. There's a day you're going to make 500, there's a day you're going to make 10,000. So you cannot really, like, have some distinct mm -hmm. budget. But you have to have a way of, like, okay, I am an accountant, so in a business you have to know this day, every other day you have to track your profit. Like, you cannot wait for a whole month to track your profit. You have to know today I sold 10 books. What profit did I make? What expenses did I incur? And then you save for, like, you can also not wait for a whole month to save. You still have to keep saving every day, tracking your profit and expenses every other day like we're just accounting every day for everything all right yeah because the month will come to an end you don't have rent to pay for the business because sometimes you know cash flow when you have money you may think you have the money the physical money so maybe i may overstock mm -hmm. yes the money is there but not there Cash. There's no the cash. cash. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, what are the measures that you have taken uh, to scale up the business this year? So, currently we are so, we are doing uh, so much uh, social media mm -hmm. campaigns, mm -hmm. marketing, Instagram, and then we even have WhatsApp groups where we make marketing easier okay. for people. You know, like someone can, you know, for WhatsApp market, like we have WhatsApp markets, like for them. You know, it's like when you walk along the street and then you see books displayed mm -hmm. on the streets, like yeah. you can check, that is that title. So for WhatsApp uh, book markets, it almost works the same way because I sh uh, someone shares a picture of the book and then you can decide, ah, this is the book I have been mm -hmm. looking for, this is the book I want to read. And it's actually and, way easier. And then you reserve. So, like, we are always just selling, mm. like, on the street but virtually. <laughs> Like, the, here is the picture of the mm. book. This is what I want. Yeah. And actually, it's way easier compared mm. to actually walking in the streets looking for a particular book. Yes, people shop so easily. So sometimes if you've stayed for two days and you've not done a market, mm -hmm. your customers will be like, what's where, happening? Where, where are, are the you? Books? What's going on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is your all-time favorite book? My all-time favorite book has to be <laughs> Born a Crime by... <laughs> Trevor Noah. Okay. Because it was. Have you read it? No, I've not read it. Oh, you should read it. I will. I will. Yeah, I, I will. should. Oh well. <laughs> so, have you ever have you ever thought of uh, writing your own book? Yes. Sometimes I've uh, really thought about it, mm -hmm. but sometimes I'm like, no, I'm not up for it. <laughs> so there's that. You know, you're here. Yeah. Maybe. It's we'll not. Stick, it's we'll not the right time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll stick to that. It's mm -hmm. not the right time. It's not the right time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can guys find you on social media if they want, the, you know, to get a book or uh, just be part of the book club, which is still the same thing. Yeah, right? it's still the same thing. Yeah. Because now, if they follow us on our Facebook page, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, Book Lounge, uh, they'll still see updates of, uh, you know, where to find us for the WhatsApp book markets. Mm -hmm. So Facebook is Book Lounge. And uh, on Instagram, we are uh, BB Book Lounge. Mm -hmm. And then our phone number, our business line, 0113-627-937. You can repeat that again? 0113-627-937. Uh, yes. That is our business line. All right. And if they have to reach us. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for creating time to be with us and talking about just pertaining bookstore, stroke, bookshop business. <laughs> uh, thank you, Michelle, for having me around. You're welcome. Thank you. uh, so that is Eileen Kemunto, uh, an accountant by profession, and she's the founder and owner of Book Launch. So make sure you follow them across all their social media handles. That is at Book Launch on Facebook. B, B, is it? 
B Book Launch, right? Yes, B Book, Book Launch. launch. Yes, that is Instagram. Instagram. Yes, on yes. Instagram. So make sure you follow them and get your latest book. Uh, and uh, yes, and get in, be part of the book the book review uh, club. Per yes. Se. Mm -hmm. yes, there you get it. So at Wadi Fight for Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. So make sure you don't tap that dial. We'll be right back in a few.